Flying a multi-engine airplane can open up a world of adventure, from reliable cross-country travel to new career options. This also presents new challenges, since the speeds and altitudes are higher, the systems are more complicated, and the emergency scenarios take more practice. This is Rob Ryder, host of Sporty's Pilot Training Courses. We're glad to have this opportunity to collaborate with the AOPA Air Safety Institute to bring you essential safety-related content from Sporty's multi-engine training course, free of charge. Whether you're new to multi-engine flying or a rusty multi-engine pilot, we trust this series will help you grasp important fundamentals that are key to operating safely in a multi-engine airplane. In this video, we'll introduce you to the basics of flying a multi-engine airplane to help lay the groundwork for other videos on single-engine operations and emergencies. Multi-engine airplanes are complex aircraft. Don't be overwhelmed by the systems and switches and controls. If you've flown a complex single-engine airplane, you've probably seen many of these before. Building on this past experience is a good place to start. The flight controls will function the same on your multi-engine training aircraft as in your single. The controls may feel a bit heavier, but you're likely operating a heavier airplane. Your multi-engine trainer may have more trim controls than found on a typical single-engine trainer. The addition of rudder trim is common, and aileron trim is not unheard of. Traditional twins have pairs of mixture, propeller, and throttle controls. Having two levers for each function allows you to make adjustments for each engine on its own. Corresponding to these controls, you will find two indicators for propeller RPM and manifold pressure. The indicators for each engine may be on separate gauges, a combined gauge with a left and right needle, or a digital representation. You will also see separate engine indications for other important parameters, such as oil pressure and temperature. The landing gear on your multi-engine trainer will function similarly to what you may have seen on a complex single. Some controls that look the same may have slightly different functions that are unique to multi-engine airplanes. The propeller control is one example. Takeoff and cruise positions are the same, but notice there is now a position called feather. This position is used when an engine fails. Completely new systems may also be present. With two propellers spinning outside the cabin of your training aircraft, you'll want to have them rotating at the same speed. This is known as synchronizing the propellers. Sinking the props reduces their noise level and removes a pulsing sensation heard in the airplane. Your training aircraft may have a system for automatically synchronizing the propellers. Another new system found on many light twins is a dedicated heater for the cabin. This type of heater burns gas from the tanks and provides heat through its own ductwork. This overcomes the difficulty of getting heat from the wing-mounted engines into the cabin for cold weather flying. Take a look at the V-speeds for a multi-engine airplane and you will see a number of familiar items. You'll also see some new speeds that you may not recognize. These speeds are related to multi-engine emergencies and operations with only one engine running. We will briefly define them here. VMC is defined as the calibrated airspeed at which, following the sudden critical loss of thrust, it is possible to maintain control of the airplane. VSSE is the safe, intentional, one-engine inoperative speed. This is a speed that your instructor will use to keep your training safe. VYSE provides the best rate of climb speed on a single engine, while VXSE affords the best angle of climb in this condition. Though these speeds will vary under certain conditions to be discussed later, VMC and VYSE are both marked on the airspeed indicator. VMC is the low speed red line. VYSE is the blue line. There are two other V speeds you will find in larger twin engine turboprops and jets V1 and V2. V1 can be defined as the takeoff decision speed. It is the maximum speed in the takeoff at which the pilot may begin to stop the airplane and remain within the accelerate stop distance. 
V2 is defined as the takeoff safety speed. This is the best one engine in operative angle of climb speed for the airplane and the minimum speed that should be flown until clear of obstacles. Practically speaking, if you experience an emergency or engine failure on the runway prior to reaching the calculated V1 speed, you should immediately abort the takeoff and come to a stop on the remaining runway. On the other hand, if you experience a system malfunction or engine failure after V1, you should continue the takeoff and rotate at the pre-planned speed. In this scenario, you are assured enough runway length and performance to initiate a climb and cross above the end of the runway at a minimum height. Once airborne during this single-engine emergency scenario, you would then accelerate to V2 and climb at this airspeed to ensure obstacle clearance along the departure path. These speeds will be found in the Airplane Flight Manual or Pilot Operating Handbook for your airplane. If you are flying an older twin, it's possible that the manufacturer may not have published all of them. The AFM, or POH for your airplane, will include the information that you have come to expect in an aircraft manual. It will also include a number of new performance charts. The principles behind weight and balance calculations do not change with a multi-engine airplane. What does change is the number of variables. In your four-seat single-engine trainer, your options for the carriage and placement of baggage were limited. In a typical twin, you will find more seats and more baggage compartments. You may have the choice of loading baggage into a nose compartment or a rear compartment or even into a wing locker. Each compartment will have its own limitations and affect the CG differently. The manual for your airplane will provide you with the information you need to make appropriate loading decisions. Some manufacturers even include suggested loading for common scenarios. You should find a checklist for the aircraft in the manual. This checklist, or a derivative created from it, will be used as we pre-flight the airplane. The inspection will be much like that for a complex single. There will, of course, be more engine and engine-related systems to check your instructor will point out the key items required during the pre-flight of your particular make and model of airplane. To access all the videos in Sporty's multi-engine training course, visit us online at sporties.com courses.